Alrighty guys, as you can see, it is a pretty dismal day out here at Humble Hyundai here in North Houston, Texas. It's got quite a fog hanging around in the air. It got kind of chilly yesterday and then it got really warm today. So of course this is the uh, end result here. But anyways, you guys guessed what's going on now. We are going to do round three of starting up the dealership vehicles here. I know we've done quite a few of these cars that are still here on the lot and it's not even been, I'd say about a week since I filmed that last one. And as you can see, we got quite a fresh assortment here. So now it's time to uh, take a look at what else we have. And the first car or cars that we're gonna be looking at are actually right next to each other. The first one is this 2014 Ford Focus SE hatchback and a 2012 Dodge Avenger SE. So as you can see, got a nice little bucket of keys here. Got to find the one to the focus here. Perfect. This one is, again, 2014, 32,000 miles. This is one of a few um, former rental cars that we actually picked up. Five-door hatchback with the style package. Like I said in my last video, we get a lot of these cars with silver exteriors and black interiors, and this one seems to be in pretty good shape. It's got a black leather upholstered interior. Looks actually pretty nice. Give a shout out to my friend Adam. He has a uh, white Ford Focus SE with pretty much all the same options that's in this one. It's kind of funny, except for the fact that his is a four-door, not a uh, five-door. Anyways. I find it so funny that Ford had this this old chime and then their new chime. That's so weird. But anyways, first car of the day. Let's see how she does. Oh, a little slow. Didn't really want to crank over. So it almost felt like the battery was dying. Shut the door. Get the, get the water off. I don't want to fling that all over the interior. All right. Well, that's the first one. And on to the next car. And our next one, as I just said, is a 2012 Dodge Avenger SE. You can tell it's a newer one. It's got the crosshair grill on the front. Again, silver with a black interior. This one has done 54,000 miles. Never really was a fan of these cars, to be honest with you. Just a true rental car. Let's find the key here. I know it's in here somewhere. Come on, there it is. Buried at the bottom. I do like the LED taillights, those are pretty decent. And the SE is the uh, most basic trim level of the Avenger that you can get. So this is a four-cylinder. Not bad. This one was a trade. This actually was not a former rental car, which is kind of uh, interesting. It's got a, I think this is a four-speed automatic. Actually, no, I think that's a six-speed, my bad. Six-speed automatic with uh, four-cylinder engine. So. Oh, that chime is so quiet you can barely hear it. Let's see what happens. Not a problem here. Again, official mileage is, if I can find how to reset this, 54,406 miles. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, so now let's walk down the lot a little ways and go check out the next couple. So now we got to walk down the lot a little bit here to actually go to our next vehicle, which actually I'm going to have to move this one during this video. This is our 2011 Hyundai Equus Ultimate. 
so it's got pretty much every option in the book. This will give us a chance to actually look at the uh, older Equus, because I know we have a review of a 2015 Equus signature on the channel. This one's in kind of a beautiful stone gray color. Very, very nice. The best part about this one is that it had all the stuff in the back seat. Open her up here. Huge rear doors. And as you can see, like I said in my review, this one has a fixed center console here in the back instead of the one that folds out of the seat. But as you can see with this, it's a lot more like a Mercedes than uh, even the 2015s because as you can see, this one here has a fridge in the back. Nice little cool box. This turns on when you uh, when you actually are driving. Got a nice little separate tray here. This is your remote for your massage function. That's accessed only through these rear seats, which is awesome. Just put that in there. You can see all that and even more. You got a little uh, TV screen back there. I'm gonna have to turn this one around, so. was interesting. Got a nice little greeting there, which is uh, nice. This one, of course, being a loaded car, it does have push button start, so we'll just keep the key in it somewhere, say in the cup holder. Foot on the brake, hit the button, and... Not a problem here. Gauges look way different than that of a uh, Standard one. This has got 55,290 miles. Like I said, I have to move this one or at least turn it around. So, uh, TV, I'll fold that back. Anyways, let's just quickly move this one here. So nice and quiet in here. I love these cars. Oh, we saw it really did a number trying to park this thing. I just don't want to end up hitting another car. the backup sensors kicking in. Pull it forward just a bit. Oop, hit the headliner. My bad. All right. God, these cars are so long. You have to do like a 10-point turn to get them to move. There we go. Now let's just move her over to right here. This shouldn't be an issue. to do this for a living so I'm kind of used to parking cars backwards like this. Gotta look in that mirror over there because god forbid you hit something with this car. When this thing was new this thing was like a 70 something thousand dollar car. And this one here still runs really really good. Actually this uh, the difference with this one is that it actually has the 4.6 liter V8 in it not the 5.0 like the new one. Alrighty. Now we'll actually go ahead and turn this one off. What a lovely little way to exit your luxury car. Anyways, so that's a start up and move for that one, but anyways, on to the next one. So, our next victim, I guess if you might say, is a almost brand new 2014 Toyota Tundra SR5 Crew Max. Crew Max, of course, meaning this one's got four doors. This one, I think, has only done about 7,200 miles, so still broken in. 5.7 liter iForce V8. Very, very nice pickup truck. And dig through here again, find the keys. 
This one here is also four-wheel drive. God, it's like opening a vault door with these big pickup trucks. The doors are just huge. Again, such a common theme. It's silver with a black interior. I guess silver seems to be quite the common color nowadays. Ugh. Oh, I was wrong. Uh, 7,802 miles. Interior of this thing is awesome. I love this, but it's it's just so big. There's like a huge area over here for the passenger side. Basically got a beeper out of a Toyota Camry now. All right, let's see what happens. And she's alive. Love these new Tundras. They didn't really change much from like 2007 to now. They didn't even really change when they were about 2012 to 13. All right, that's that one warming up. Let's go for another one. So next up is another 2014 Ford Focus. This one though is in a beautiful pearl white and it is a four-door SE. This one also has a sunroof. This one does not have like the style package or anything like that. This is a very basic Focus SE. Doesn't even have the lip spoiler on the back. Just very, very basic car. Good way to get you back and forth from A to B. I'm gonna have to move this one over too. Because it is way too close to that Tundra. Ugh. This one is another one of the uh, former rental cars that we got. Uh, this one's got a black interior as well, black and gray. Let's see if you can shoehorn my way in here. This one has 31,380 miles. Very basic car. Six-speed automatic transmission. Should have the two-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder, just like that Focus hatchback. Very quiet startup. Very quiet. I'm just gonna move this one over just a hair here. Because again, it's way too close to that Tundra. That Tundra's a big pickup and I do not want any door dings on this lot. I do not want management coming after any one of us after someone puts a ding or dent in the side of one of these cars. Let's back her up here. Get her nice and even. All right. So, that's both focuses taken care of. Now on to the next one. And actually, in this case, we're actually going to be going to the car that is directly behind it, fighting our way through the exhaust fumes coming from the Tundra here. We find our 2014 Ford Fusion SE. Very basic Fusion. This is the step up from the S, which is the most basic one. This is the last of the uh, former rental cars that we bought, so it should have a few thousand miles on it. This one's nice though. It's uh, black with kind of a tan interior. I'm guessing this is the uh, tuxedo black with stone interior. Uh, it's black with a dune cloth interior, my fault. Pretty nice looking vehicle. I got this dune kind of tan-ish cloth interior. Really, really nice shape. Very pretty. 
sometimes dealerships buy uh, ex rental cars and fleet cars and stuff when they want to stock up their inventory. They're probably the easiest way to get a hold of something. This one, I think, I just read according to the odometer, is about 38,000 miles. I think 38,600 and something. Anyways, let's go ahead and crank this puppy into life. Yeah, 38,660.7 miles. Such a charming little chime. All right, turn the key and... That's an interesting uh, chime to let you know that the engine is on. How funny is that? The interior of these fusions is nice. I mean, they're okay for uh, what Ford's building nowadays, but I cannot stand these ruffled seats sometimes. It's just not for me. Beautiful. Sweet. Roll down that one. And it's on to the next one which is way the heck over here. Got three more to go. And this next one is for all you people who love me starting older vehicles. This is our 2004 Chevrolet Tahoe LT. This one I think needs to be adjusted as well. It's kind of parked a little funny. This one has got 111,000 miles on it going for just over 11 grand here on the lot. Actually a very nice shaped truck. Only got a couple paint marks on it. One's got a little bit of rust in it, but it's not like how trucks see abuse up north though. Keys for this one are real easy to find. It's the only one that looks like that. A little bit of yellowing on the side skirt, but that's not too big a deal. This one's white with this beautiful beige leather interior. Actually, for 111,000 miles, this truck hasn't worn really too badly. Oh, door squeaks. <laughs> we got headphones. Got an onboard entertainment system right here. Love it. Got the DVD player up top. So this one is uh, relatively loaded. It's got a third row seat in it too. Always a nice thing to have for bigger families. 11. I love the step in height on these Tahoes. It's not too high and it's not too low either. It's just perfect. You almost slide right into this thing. Ah, eh, radio is a little worse for wear. Let's see here. Oh, the display is not showing up. I wonder if that's the... Alright, well, anyways, let's just see what happens. There it goes. It clicks a little bit. Change engine oil. So they probably haven't serviced this thing yet. Yeah, 111,194 miles. Power steering feels okay. I'm going to just straighten this one out here just a little bit. It's just a little cockeyed. I just, I get a little OCD about this being that this was my job before. Not here, but at other dealerships I've done this before, so. Anyways. There's our other porter right there in that white Sonata trying to uh, do his job too. Let's back this one up just a little bit more. I don't want to bump into anything. All right. Well, I think that's good for that one. Grab a couple more keys here. We'll just go ahead and leave that here because I've only got two sets of keys and they're one right after the other. All right, so on to the next one. So next up on the list is a truck that I actually did a full review on, so keep an eye out for it on the channel if you haven't already seen it. This is our 2013 Nissan Titan Pro 4X. 
So this is basically like a Ford F-150 FX4, um, Chevrolet Z71, basically any truck that you can think of with an off-road package, that's basically how this Pro 4X is. This one's finished in a beautiful graphite blue. This is my favorite truck on the lot right here. It's just so nice looking. Kind of squeeze through here. Got the nice little deck lights up on the back. Open it up. Such a huge door to step into this thing. Graphite blue with the charcoal cloth interior, like I said. Love the design of that steering wheel. I love how they updated it over the old one. Show you in the back seat. This one is a crew cab. You can have this truck as either a crew cab, which is a four-door, or a king cab, which is the uh, kind of the extended cab term used by Nissan. Pretty good sized bed. It's got an aftermarket bed liner in it too. All right. Ugh. This one has, I think it, last I checked, it was about 16,000 miles on it. So this truck is actually still in its infancy. Yeah, 16,361 miles. Oh, and the moment you turn that key, that 5.6 liter V8 just burst into life. I love the sound of this motor in here. It's got a five-speed automatic transmission match to it. Leather trim steering wheel, leather shifter knob, backup camera. This thing's got some pretty darn good options in it. Cool. Oh, before I go anywhere else, I just have to show you the motor on this one. I love this pickup. Not the most powerful thing in the world, but... There you go. Running sweet. And last but not least, I kind of saved the best for last, I guess you might say. But if you guys remember, we did a small little review here on this 2014 BMW X1 S Drive 28i. Well, we got another one. Well, this is a 2013 BMW X1. And this one here is actually fully loaded. This is the X Drive 35i. So this is four wheel drive with the three liter twin turbo inline six in it. Finished in this beautiful kind of like a mocha brown color. I don't know how I feel about the exterior color, but it actually is a pretty nice vehicle. This one's got those awesome angel eyes that come on when you uh, unlock the vehicle. As you can see, even an LED accent running along the top here. Very pretty. polished wood veneer trim. Very, very beautiful vehicle. I guess that's why they come on. You either have to leave them in automatic or someone left the lights on in here. Hopefully the battery's not dead. That would suck. The last car of the day, we've had good luck so far and all of a sudden, bam, you hit a dead battery just like we did last time. That leather wrap e brake. This one's got a six speed automatic transmission in it. And the keys in this thing always work so weird because you still have to stick it in the dash, even though this one has the comfort access package where it, uh, where it uh, allows you to access the car wirelessly from the outside. But neither here nor there, push button starts. We all know how that goes. Keys in the ignition, foot on the brake, hit the button on the dash, and Ooh, this thing sounds so good. This one's only done 4,360 miles. 4,360. Ooh, that sounds good. Someone left their dealership tag in here, too. Oh, you can hear that turbo whistle, too. Oh, so awesome. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'll go ahead and show you the engine on this one too. This one's actually a pretty snazzy engine for a car like this. Ah, there you go. Three liter, twin turbo, inline six. Well over 300 horsepower strapped into this puppy. So nice. Beautiful engine too, love it. Well guys, there you go. A nice little series of startups on some of the vehicles that we have. I know this has been round three, but there's a lot more to come because we got a lot of vehicles that are coming in by the day here. So if you want to see any particular type of vehicle, um, whether you've seen it in this footage or you see it in another film and you want to see it again, let me know via the comments. I'm not taking requests at all, but if you guys want to see a particular vehicle here and I have the opportunity, let me know. Until then guys, this has been Grand Prix GTP 02 with round three of starting up the dealership vehicles. Stay tuned guys, because there's gonna be a lot more. Take care.